Hi everyone, bonjour à tous. Und für unsere Freunde im deutschsprachigen Raum, herzlich willkommen zu unserem Vlog. Thank you for joining us again on our journey to the chateau. I'm Stuart. And I'm Patrick. In this episode, we want to share with you a checklist of specific things that we look for when we're hunting for a chateau. Must have or wish list. Is having a glass of wine while we do our vlog considered a must have or a wish list? Must have. Cheers. If you like our vlog, please don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, and the notification bell. Very much appreciated. Thank, Thank you. you. Must have a wish list. One realization we had is we wanted to be out in the country. Now, we did not want to be an hour and a half from the next hub of civilization. That's a little too rural, although you find that in France or Spain. Right. Uh, but being outside of the city, not having uh, a lot of traffic, having something that, in a place that's quiet, and, and we have that here where we live now, mm -hmm. uh, to a good degree, but we could be a little more rural, and that's one of our must-have items. Right. We have dogs, and as I said before, they can be a bit barky, annoyingly so, but we love them. On the other hand, um, we also want to be more self-sufficient. So we would like to have chicken so that we have our own eggs. We would like to grow some of our own vegetables. I'm not saying we're going to be totally self-sufficient, but it's something that we, we like to aspire to. And um, in terms of sustainability, I think it's very important for the two of us. One of the things that's on our, our uh, must-have list is the area that we want to have our chateau in France. So the map is showing a highlighted area of where we mainly have been looking at chateau. It's basically uh, Normandy, southern Normandy, uh, Centre Val de Loire, so the Loire Valley, and which also incorporates the Cher department. And so it's, it's quite a large area that, that we're looking at. Now, having said that, um, we love the Provence. It's beautiful. Uh, it just gets very, very hot in the summer. Uh, the Atlantic coast is beautiful, but it's not where we kind of felt most at home. Right. Uh, but it's not it, that those are areas we don't love as well. One of the things that we decided that is a must have for us is having some sort of a freshwater supply that's on the property, whether it's a pond or a creek or river. Uh, we sort of decided that that's something that we really want. Yes, definitely. Uh, whenever we're looking at a listing and we see that the landscaping on the property has something like a cedar of Lebanon, uh, it's a beautiful tree that Patrick always makes sure that he points out because it's one of his favorite trees. But I would have to say that that would probably be on our wish list of items and not a must have because I don't think we would purposely not choose a chateau because it didn't have a certain type of a tree. No, that is true. I love cedars of Lebanon. I like any kind of old trees. In our current property, we have about 100 oak trees that are over 100 years old. So uh, I'm a bit of a tree hugger. I, uh, trees are so important for, for the environment. So yes, old trees are one of my big wish list items, but it's not a deal breaker if there's no cedar of Lebanon. Right. Although I would plant one, but then I have to promise myself that I live to about 250 years They are age. one of the <laughs> slowest growing trees. <laughs> Another tree that we both really love are linden trees. It's true. I mean, linden trees are so ingrained into Germanic culture. Uh, and uh, you find a lot of them in, in England as well. They're beautiful trees. You can prune them to have certain shapes. Uh, and if they're not there, now that's a tree that grows a little faster, we will plant them. Right. Now one other wish list item, not must have, but right. definitely wish list, right. is an allee. So an allee is a tree-lined street or road or access um, to the chateau or in front of the chateau. Sometimes it's uh, one line of tree on each side, sometimes mm -hmm. it's two. Mm -hmm. In uh, Chicago, for example, we have alleys which is uh, the access for 
uh, garbage trucks where people have their garages and that's not what no. we mean this is not what we're looking for <laughs> we had that uh, so an LA would be a definite plus yeah so another thing that for us that would be a definitely a must-have would be an outbuilding that we can convert into a jeet right so we know from uh, our previous vlogs we showed you a couple of outbuildings that we had and we actually liked really liked the outbuildings in the previous chateaus that we went to see we want to have one or multiple jeets so the more outbuildings there are the better right to a, a certain extent there there is the point when it is too much because all of this is upkeep if there are no outbuildings that would be a deal breaker for us right we talked about outbuildings and one other kind of outbuilding is uh something that we could convert into an event space so it could be an old barn large barn or uh, a long house or uh, a chicken barn that uh, is in good in good shape or in salvageable condition right so something else for us that's definitely on the must-have would be a proximity to uh, a hospital medical facility and also to a vet yes so clinic veterinaire is very important because we have dogs we sometimes have litters uh, and puppies so that that care is extremely important and let's face it we're no spring chicken so it's good to have something close by so uh, immediate care facilities are actually quite remarkably uh, well distributed in France we don't want to be further away though from a major hospital than about 25 minute driving distance same with uh, a veterinary clinic where if something happens where they can do surgery and um, veterinary uh, care very often like primary medical care is usually within about 10 minutes driving distance however we have seen a chateau uh, advertised that was an hour and a half away from the nearest hospital right that was a no no no, no. now one of our must-have items is convenient distance to a boulangerie patisserie and bread croissants and pain au chocolat are so essential so yeah. 10 minutes maximum driving distance well, something that would probably be more on our wish list would be to be uh, in a close proximity to things like a vineyard or a cheese maker definitely right. it, it's we, we really want to support local producers and artisans it's so important to keep uh, tradition alive big wish list item yeah so now talking specifically about the style of the chateau mm -hmm. one thing for us that is a must-have would be a 17th or 18th century french architecture yes we love the symmetry of most of them or a lot of them not all of them are symmetrical but we love the symmetry right uh now having said that there are chateaux that are vast with 30 40 bedrooms it's not what right, we're looking no, for. It's, no. it's way too much to take care of. Uh, I'm, I applaud the people that take care of them and, and buy them and restore them. Uh, I don't think that is anything we would consider. No. In one of our prior vlogs, we showed a chateau that was with an island in the stream. Uh, very pretty from the outside and the one thing it did not have clearly besides many other things but was an impressive staircase and that is actually quite really a lovely thought to have an impressive right. staircase right. so it's it's a wish list item that is right there teetering at the edge to must have yeah i think this one we can actually put both on there i think it's kind of a wish list must have for both yes uh and then in the picture you can see uh three different types of stairs that actually I think we would be pretty happy with either one of the, any of these three types. You've got something that's mostly stone, you've got something that's a combination of stone and uh, iron, and then you've got something that's wooden, and all of them are all three very impressive Stunning. staircases. What's not to love? Now, one of the items on the have to have list is original floors we have seen chateau art advertised that had no original features left right they had no character at all no fireplaces no, no floors everything was new why bother buying a chateau that someone 
rehabbed when it looks like it was built in 2019. Right. Not, not for us. So, here we have the uh, burgundy stone of Pierre de Bourgogne, which is a two-tone limestone, which is beautiful. Yep. Uh, marble, two-tone marble, black and white. Tomets, which are a thick terracotta tile that comes in square, rectangular, and octagonal. Right. They are very beautiful and extremely sustainable. And then, of course, all different kinds of wood floors, including parquet, parquet de Versailles, uh, herringbone, or just thick wood planks. All of them are absolutely perfect for us. Another thing for us that is a must-have is to have some sort of original decorative plaster or boiserie uh, woodwork or painted paneling. Uh, and we know that we want to use some kind of uh, replication of period wallpaper if we can. Yeah, and, and even if there is just partial wall paneling um, that can be painted in a two-tone might be very nice. Or we might decide to just do it in a single color. Um, rep there are rep beautiful reproductions of, of uh, 18th century wallpaper. Right. However, Stuart has also already designed toile his own twelve designs. There's one that's called the Peacock in the Olive Tree. That would be an option for us to use in any color that is appropriate to the time period. Another one of our favorite items that we have seen at Viandry are alcoves. Uh, now that would be a wish list item because you know we don't have to have an alcove, but we have to say that we do really love them when we see them. They, they are stunning, and so there are two different. Well, they're all the different, same kind of alcove, but so you have an alcove in living rooms or boudoirs where you can withdraw into and be all sulky or just take a nap. So it's a room where it's a living room with an alcove. Or you have an alcove within a bedroom where very often on left, left or right side of the alcove are doors and on one side Usually, is a toilet and a, and a basin to wash your hands, and on the other side is uh, a closet. So that would be yes, that would be great. Now there's a lot of salvage uh, in in France, so buying uh, paneling and installing it in a bedroom where it's missing mm. is absolutely an option. So this is a wish list item, right. not a must have. Right. Another wish list item are Trumeau mirrors. Now, Trumeau mirrors were usually between two windows or over fireplaces. It's decorative. However, if it's not there, it's okay. Either one can buy them or make them. That's true. Uh, and, you know, the history of the Trumeau is that you know, these, were, these were placed in the room with uh, candles, candelabras in front of them, it was to help light the room in the evenings because they had no electricity. So the actual purpose of having a Trumeau mirror was actually to light the rooms in the evening. It, yeah, reflecting, if you have six candles and you reflect it, you have the light of 12 candles reflected back into the room. So it really helped light evening salons. Right, and these examples are showing different kinds of Trumeaus where you have uh, mirrors that ha over the top of them, they have different kinds of paintings, uh, still lifes, Sometimes it's plaster work, and sometimes it's uh, boiserie woodwork. For us, fireplace mantles, original fireplace mantles, are definitely a must-have in our chateau. Yes, well, you can restore them, clearly. I mean, if there's a chateau with 10 fireplaces and one or two mantles are beyond repair, there are sources where one can get the re a replacement However, we would always try to restore and what, what is there before we take anything out. But sometimes right. there is no option of uh, restoring. One big issue for a chateau or any historic building is heating. In the 17th, 18th century, there was no central heating or forced air as we call it in the United States. So therefore, open fireplaces were the only way to heat. Right, and radiators actually were not even invented until around 1850, uh, and that was the time of Victorian. So a lot of the radiators that we see in a chateau are very Victorian looking. Uh, the one that you see here on the left was actually one of the original radiators called a mattress radiator. 
And I hope we don't find that in the chateau anywhere. No, please don't. No. But you can see, you know, the middle one, fascinating. You know, they had like uh, little compartments and stuff in the radiator. Very often they were in dining rooms or breakfast rooms to keep food warm. And then, of course, there are the, the regular uh, radiators that come from very ornate, beautiful ironwork to very simple. And all of those have dead charm. Right. And actually, uh, a lot of them are still being made today. They're being reproduced and still being made today. Especially in Great Britain. Right. And kudos to the Brits for actually keeping this alive. So for us, the heating systems are a matter of discussion. There is no right or wrong. One can go completely modern. There are radiators nowadays that are completely flat. With trompe l'oeil, one can actually paint it to look like wood paneling. There are uh, covers. Right. Good Lord, since I can remember having that in the 40s and 50s, right. seeing that from the time period. I wasn't alive then, although I look it. Right, so the this uh, photo is showing different ways that people have basically hid their radiators, right? Yes. So uh, the photo on the left is from Viandry, and you can see that they actually created a paneling piece to put across the window in front of the radiator in order to kind of hide it so you didn't see it. As, you know, it was a, a prominent feature in the room. Uh, the other ones here are showing reproductions that are uh, Victorian kind of covers. Yeah, so a piece that looks like uh, furniture, like a chest right, of something drawers. something looks like a cabinet or a, a chest of drawers, yeah. So it's, it really comes down to, to style and taste, and uh, Philip and Anna at, at Le Fleur have reproductions of radiators that are, have very, because they're made out of cast iron, very intricate designs on them, beautiful. Now, there are also the extremely modern ones, and some of them today are, are mirrors. mirrors. Right. right. There are radiators that are being created now that are the more modern flat radiators that we actually have seen some of these tall uh, vertical radiators in Chateau. And, and they blend right in. Right. And you can paint them, one can paint them any color. Uh, you can, one can order them in a lot of colors. So that would be an option or having a, a large radiator in an entrance hall that is actually mirrored. Very, it's fascinating to us. So yeah. we have not made up our mind at all yeah. what and we're going to do. Right, and it would just depend on what happens when we find the chateau of what it currently has as its heating system. I have to say I am a big fan of open fires. I always loved open fireplaces. However, Europeans are very conscious about energy preservation and energy efficiency. If you have an open fire in a fireplace, it is about 10% efficient. However, when you put insets into the fireplaces, like they have done in Le Fleur and they're doing now in La La Salle, that is, they, those insets are between 86 and 90% efficient. So that really heats a room and it's for sustainability of this planet and for future generations. We want to do as much as we can to help make everything sustainable. All right. In this photo, uh, some of these might look familiar to some of you. So on the left, we've got the breakfast salon. That's Anna and Phillips at Chateau gonville sur Honfleur. Uh, and on the upper right is Terry and Ash's uh, fireplace from Chateau de La Lasalle. Besides open fireplaces, in the 18th century, 19th century, in Germany, Austria, and Scandinavia, and Russia, uh, or Eastern Europe, I should say, as a whole, were Kachelöfen. So those are faience, or terracotta, glazed terracotta uh, ovens that uh, would heat up and radiate heat out for hours. Yeah, and you can see here in the photo, I mean, these came in all different kinds of shapes and sizes and colors. Anything you can think of, uh, they made these. The one that is uh, in the upper right corner 
is uh, Ed and Anna's from Chateau Lagorce. Thank you everyone for watching our vlog. And for learning about our chateau must-haves and wish lists. Have a happy Thanksgiving for us in the United States and everyone else. See you next time. Bon journée. Bonsoir. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.